Hi everyone, welcome back to another great interview series. Today I have the privilege to interview Dr. Jay Gurdia. How are you, Dr. Jay? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. Dr. Jay is the CEO and founder of Triple P Life. He's also a health and wellness expert, entrepreneur, consultant, and Amazon best-selling author. So Dr. Jay, tell us more about your entrepreneurship life and what obstacles you came and how do you overcome them? That's uh, been an entrepreneur since I've been really little. Always I was figuring out a way to hustle and make a buck. And, uh, but it really kind of took off uh, once um, I graduated from chiropractic school and I started, to, I started my own practice and then opened other practices. Entrepreneurship is kind of in my blood as it relates to being able to reach out and help others. But my journey really began, um, uh, we had purchased a practice and uh, was you know, thrust into the role of leadership. And I wasn't an effective leader when I first began. I didn't understand what it took to inspire people and collate people around a, a common mission and a vision. Mm -hmm. And so we had a high turnover rate and a poor satisfaction and low productivity. And, and it was because primarily because I wasn't the leader that I needed to become until one day uh, I reached out to a mentor who asked me, he said, uh, what's going on with your business? And I shared everything that was going on. It took about three minutes and at the end of that, I felt really good after expressing all that. And I thought, I thought he left. I thought he hung up because the phone was dead. And I said, you still there? And he goes, yeah. He says, I know exactly what's wrong with your business. And I said, what is it? He said, your business is waiting for a leader to show up and it's not you. And so from that moment on, I realized I needed to figure out what's this leadership thing. And then I began to learn about the eight habits of success as far as Build, uh, businesses follow people. So as people grow, their businesses grow. A, a business can never outgrow its leader. So I began to delve into these habits and uh, work on myself, work on the, the weaknesses that I had and, and the strengths that I had and worked on my leadership. And all of a sudden, um, we, we collated around a, a common vision. Uh, we started to attract people who were excited and passionate about what we were doing. And the business tripled in just a few years. So I learned that great leadership, uh, commitment to personal growth, and collating around a vision, common vision that everyone can buy into and is passionate about. Uh, there's nothing that you can't be successful with. It doesn't matter whatever business it is. Yeah, I agree with you. And especially nowadays, people leave jobs, not the job, because of the, they leave their jobs because of the leader and not because of the circumstances. And what are the characteristics? You mentioned eight characteristics of a leader. Can you share those characteristics? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, it starts with dreaming. As we get older, we stop dreaming. As kids, we dream easily. You know, we fantasize and want to be a rock star or a princess, yeah. whatever the case may be. And we dream easily as children because we don't judge it. It's just what it is. We just have fun with it. But as we get older, we start to judge our dreams. Mm -hmm. And so we put uh, uh, artificial limits and li our limiting beliefs towards those dreams. And the real juice and passion in life is, is constantly asking yourself this question, what's possible? You know, what can I accomplish? What, what can I change and, and impact the, the world with? So number one is leadership. Number two is uh, authenticity, is you know, really understanding who you are and living true to who you are, not trying to fit, fit yourself into a group or a category um, that meets a need. Uh, because we are you know, all unique, if we uh, truly express that uniqueness, people will be attracted to that based on who we are. Uh, we look at uh, number three is mentorship. I've yet to meet anyone who's been successful in life who hasn't surrounded themselves with great mentors, who have accelerated their learning, who have uh, encouraged them, who have been a voice of reason, who challenges them, um, does so in a non-judgmental way. So mentors is a, is a really important uh, aspect of it. Yes. Number eight, or excuse me, number four is core values. Mm. Um, the number one stress that people experience on a day-to-day -day basis is living incongruent with the core values. You might ask, you may say, well, do people know what their core values? They may not verbalize it, but we know internally. Mm -hmm. Like we would know if, if uh, integrity was an important part of you know, who we are. And then if we acted out of integrity, that would create internal conflict and creates all sorts of um, um, poor health and things like that. Yeah. So knowing your core values and living true to those core values, which also helps you then build 
uh, value number eight, so I'm jumping from four to eight, which is goal setting. Most people who set goals, believe it or not, only 3% of the people actually write their goals down. Mm. And the unfortunate part is, is people who set goals, uh, they don't set goals that are consistent with their core values. So they hear something they like, it sounds cool, they set a goal and they wonder why they don't achieve it. Yeah. But when you set your goals based on your core values, it's something that you can um, anchor to because your core value will hold leverage it. So if it's health, right? If my core value is, is fitness. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to be able to follow the fitness plan because it's something that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. so, so core values is, is really important. Uh, the next thing is, uh, is meditation. Uh, meditation was one of the things that really began to change my mindset mm -hmm. and, and meditation. Most of us live in what we call a, a fight or flight uh, state all, all day long. We're, we're either hustling, bustling, or you know, normally rushing around to get to work and take the kids where we want to go. Um, or, you know, we're just stressed out and we're always resistant. Um, so that's a sympathetic dominant nervous system, which we can only live that way so long before there's going to be uh, damage to our, our physical and, and emotional well-being. So meditation literally takes us from sympathetic to parasympathetic. It slows the system down, takes us out of that fight or flight mode, slows the mind down so we can begin to observe our thoughts and really get to core what's important to us and things that we want to accomplish. So meditation is, is really important. And then affirmations. Um, most people, well, the average person has 60,000 thoughts a day. 80% um, of those are negative. So 48 to 50,000 times a day, we're telling ourselves disempowering thoughts. We're undermining our own success by the internal conversations that we're having. So an affirmation helps change that. It's what it is that I'm, that I'm intending to change and become so if I'm uh, intending to, uh, I'm going to create great relationships, abundant health and abundant wealth, that's an affirmation. And so if I affirm that with energy and passion and enthusiasm, it literally sinks into your subconscious mind and begins to rewire your old thoughts and creates new thoughts. So positivity then becomes your dominant yes. thought process. That's how you break a negative mind. So those are the eight habits of success. Thank you for sharing with me, Dr. J. And for the audience watching or listening for the first time, uh, my process of interviewing my guests will be on, on a series of five questions and I'll post them every day. So you'll be with us on a journey uh, sharing uh, what Dr. J is going to tell us. So uh, subscribe to the channel, like and share this video. And if you have any other comments, leave it below and tune in tomorrow for another question with Dr. J.